A Roadster. It's owned by John Massori of Ilburn, Georgia. This is the second time that one of John's vehicles has made the car of the week cut, and you can see why. This perfectly restored British two-seater is a real beauty. If you have a classic car to show off, submit at least two good color photos and a description to Motor Week, Owings Mills, Maryland, 21117. Probably the best part of being an adult is getting to pick your own toys. Of course, the tough part is paying for them. They're always more expensive, but they're more fun. Or are they? You know, Lisa Barrow makes her living reporting on some of the biggest and best four-wheeled toys available. But as she recently found out, it's the small ones that we never forget. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas... Mom, I got a matchbox! I remember getting a lot of my matchboxes for Christmas. My mom would put them in my Christmas stocking and uh, they were just the right size to slide right in two or three would really help fill it up. My whole childhood was matchboxes. I'd spend hours in my room playing by myself with these little cars. I was pretty much fascinated with them. They were perfect for little hands, and they were different. They weren't like the American cars because they were made in England. So I think they had a kind of an English touch. Anyway, I had a great appreciation for them, and I think that appreciation led me to have a great appreciation for cars even today. Why do so many people have such a fascination with matchbox? I think the fascination for matchbox comes from uh, the, the name being around so long. Uh, they started to come in this country in 1953 uh, and they were a first class item. Everett Marshall's childhood love of Matchbox cars turned into an adult passion. Today he owns the Matchbox Road Museum in Newfield, New Jersey, which houses a staggering 15,000 models. And usually when people walk in the door, the first thing they see is, you know, just a hallway of complete models. And normally, depending on whether it's the husband or the wife uh, who is the collector, the other one is golden when they leave here because they know that there's another nut out here that's worse than the husband. Collector or not, the Matchbox Road Museum is a delightful trip back in time. Surprises await you in every nook and cranny. From the regular wheel series to super fast, yesteryear and more. If it's from Matchbox, you'll surely find it here. At least as you can see on this super fast model, there's a license plate around the back end there. Uh, most of the license plates, now that one says EEM, and it has three little lines, which means the third. Uh, that license plate is my name and initials. Uh, most of the license plates do have some meaning uh, on the models as opposed to just being uh, random numbers and letters. The first Matchbox was the Road Roller, worth $50. Like most Matchbox models, there were different versions. Variations on color and limited production runs make one model more valuable than another. If you're trying to get an investment right now, it's very difficult. Uh, you have to spend a lot of money to get models that are worth a lot of money. Uh, this, this one that we see now on the turntable is 18.5. Uh, that means it's the fifth version of the number 18 in the line. This was produced in 1969. Uh, normally you find this field car with red wheel hubs, and this one you can see have, has green wheel hubs. It's very, very sought after. What draws somebody to Matchbox collecting? Why do we collect? We collect because we love to collect. Some people just collect everything. I collect only Matchbox. Per se, I mean, I have other models. I have different kind of toys, but uh, my big thing is Matchbox because I just love Matchbox since I was a little kid. Good night, Nick.